we've looked at some basic driver control um, functionality. So now we're going to look at some autonomous for the programming skills part of the competition. Um, okay, so we've got the field here set up with the robot on it, and I've got a couple of extra uh, tools which come in handy for this um, for for planning your autonomous routines. So we don't need the remote anymore. Get rid of that. Um, I have got tape measure, pen, and a notepad. Um, and this is handy when you're, you're sort of trying to plan your movements and uh, uh, and what you're what you're trying to do in your autonomous routines. Um, okay, so the basic mod kit set up here, using the drivetrain block um, as uh, exactly as it was in the um, drive control program. I've added uh, a gyro which I've got there plugged into port eight, and I've also got a color sensor which we'll look at in a bit as well. Um, and we have one motor here, which is the one that drives the uh, the intake rollers on the front of the robot. Um, so initially, we're not going to worry about using the sensors. We're just going to look at using uh, the basic drivetrain functionality, which uh, is not bad. It's going to be adequate. Um, but if you really want to improve the accuracy, you're going to need to start looking at some uh, some sensors as well. Um, so here we go. Let's uh, let's get a program going. So I'm going to go to the blocks part of the uh, uh, of Modkit. I'm on the drivetrain section, so I'm going to do some programming for my drivetrain. Um, now what I want to do is plan roughly the movements uh, that I want. So I want to know how I'm going to get to my first set uh, of balls that I want to pick up. So the first set of balls I'm going to pick up are these three uh, along the far side of the field there. So I need to move forwards, um, come over here, and then move forwards to collect the ball. So using the tape measure, I'm going to take a known point on my uh, on my robot, which I'm going to use the, the centre of the front wheels, the axles there, and work out roughly how much I want to come forwards um, and make a note of that. So I'm going to come forwards 400 mil. It's 400 millimetres. Then I need to take a 90 degree turn uh, to the left. So I'm going to do left 90. Um, then I'm going to need to move forwards, because I'll be roughly in this square. I need to move into this square. So, okay, so I'm going to go forwards approximately 350. I always change these once we've tested it. I need to turn right 90 degrees to be facing towards the balls. Uh, and then finally, um, I need to move forwards and collect the balls. Now, we're going to just test this first part of the program and, and see how it looks. So let's put that into Modkit. First thing we're going to need is a, a when start block. This will start executing as soon as we run the program. Um, then in the output section of the drivetrain, we've got the, the movement blocks themselves. And I'm going to use the drive forward command. And this one we're going to use um, has the number of millimetres that we wish to drive. So pop that on there. And my first movement was 400, so I want to move forward 400 millimetres. Type that into this box. Then I want to turn left. I want to turn left 90 degrees. Yeah, I can do revolutions or degrees, so revolutions by turns of the wheel or degrees by um, rotations of the robot. Now I want to go forward 350 mil. I need to turn right 90. Drop the left down and change it to right, uh, and it's 90 degrees. Okay, it's the start of our autonomous program. Let's download it and give it a test. I'm going to download this into slot one. And then hit the run icon here. And off we go. So there we go. It's my first mo uh, motion forward, followed by 90 degree turn to the left, another forwards, followed by a 90 degree turn to the right. And that's not bad. I'm pretty much lined up. I haven't got my measurements too wrong. I think, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Happy with that. 
Um, so the next thing I need to do is work out how far forwards I need to travel to collect the balls. We'll go about 590. I'm going to add forwards 590. Okay, so that should get us to the uh, where the balls are. Um, we also need to collect them, which means at some point I'm going to need to switch on my intake rollers at the front. And to do that, I'm going to use the broadcast command. Now, in the logic of my program, I want to switch the uh, intake roller on at this point before I drive forward and try and collect the balls. And then once I finish driving forward here, I want to switch them off. So I'm going to break that block away, go to my control section and insert the broadcast command. I can connect this back up. Okay, another broadcast command because this is going to be for my stop and I need to click on this drop down here and I'm going to create a new event and an event is um, where this part of the program can tell another part of the program um, to, to start running. So I'm going to call this Start intake. Then this one I'm going to call create a new event. Stop intake. And my intake is this motor here. So I'm going to move over, click on this motor, and I'm going to move over and start creating some programs, some code for for what this motor is going to do. So we're going to drag in the when start block. But this motor isn't going to start um, when the program starts. I can drop this down and we can now see my broadcast commands that I created. Um, so I want one for when start intake. So when it hears this, i.e. when the program gets to this point, this will be broadcast. The motor will hear it and then start doing whatever I attach here. Um, and what I'm going to do is just tell it to start spinning the motor forwards like so. And I also need another when block, but this time rather than start intake, I'm going to put it to stop intake and I'm going to tell it to stop that motor. So now our program looks like this. When we start running it, it goes down here, forwards, left, forwards, right, then broadcast start intake which will be heard by the motor here and switch on my intake. Drive forward another 590 mil to collect the balls and then once that's completed, stop the intake again. Um, okay, so let's give that a whirl. Download that. And whilst that's downloading, I'll reset the robot. Okay, here we go. So there's our forward, turn left, forwards, turn right, and then the intake roll should switch on, and we go forwards. Now, I see a problem there straight away. Let's stop that. My intake roller um, was actually going the wrong way. Uh, it was going backwards. So two ways I can fix that. I can either change my forward to reverse. That will fix it. But I want the um, terminology forward to be used for collecting and reverse for um, uh, releasing. So to do that, I'm actually going to reverse the motor. So going back to the robot tab, click on the settings for the motor, reverse direction. Now forwards is backwards, backwards is forwards. So I can leave this the same. Right, I've downloaded that and reset the robot. You may have noticed actually when um, the, when the robot was moving, there was some reasonably large pauses between uh, completing one movement and starting the next. Um, we can reduce those by on the drivetrain block. I'm going to separate this, and I'm going to add another block in here. If you go to setup, where it says set timeout. and reduce that. I'm going to put it down to 0.2 of a second. Um, 
What the timeout does is it, it waits, um, we've got two motors on the drivetrain. When it's driven forwards, um, it's waiting for both those motors to, uh, to, to say that they've completed their, um, uh, their, their function there, so however many rotations it needs to travel that far. If one of them doesn't complete, the timeout um, is what then tells it to move on to the next part in the program. So by reducing that timeout uh, value, we can, um, we can reduce the lag between uh, movements. And let's give this a go. Now you see much quicker there between the forwards and the turn. And then on with the intake. And there we go. Right. Now we can add the next move, which is to reverse away. Drive. Reverse. We're going to go roughly the same distance back that we went forwards at this point. So reverse, uh, sorry, no, at this point. So where we went forwards 590, you want to back up the same amount, so we're back to the same sort of position. Okay, well, it did what I asked it to do, um, but without the intake roller spinning, uh, it didn't manage to retain the balls. Um, so I probably need to keep that intake turning. So let's switch these around. That. Stretch over there to... Reset it and one last go. So there we go, that's kind of done exactly what I want. We've um, collected the balls and we can move on and continue to elaborate on that program. Um, but hopefully that gives you a uh, a good understanding of how you can use the drivetrain commands to move around the field. I think the other thing it demonstrates is how useful it is to have a field um, to, to have the, the, the items laid out correctly so that you can start to uh, plan your, your autonomous routines and test things um, and, and see how it reacts in, in the actual field environment.